Good day. So, as you can see, I've been pretty busy building lots of factories, working on my latest massive project, which is using all the uranium in the map to make as many nuclear power plants as I can. And that's going to be 250. So I'm going to be going through a little bit more detail on uh, some of the numbers and some of the recipes I've chosen to use and how some of the factories work. And um, might give you an idea of how much is involved in doing nuclear well, the max nuclear build. Everything you see in this world is, there's nothing in this world that isn't for a nuclear power. Also, every single machine, well 90% of the machines are double sharded. So whenever you're looking at factories laid out like this, uh, this should be 84 manufacturers, but it's actually 42 manufacturers. All right, so double the size if you weren't going to use shards. All right, let's get straight into it. Uh, I'll go to the first factory, the rubber one. Rightio, over at the rubber, um, and this is the first factory that I built. Uh, one of the things I, I did is I went through and I re redid the signs, how they look, uh, a lot more bolder and easier to kind of read. So I'm going to quickly go through um, what is known as the oil tripling um, method. All right, so let's start over here at the oil nodes. Now what I've used is one impure node there, which is uh, three, uh, 150, max oil 150 out of impure. One normal node, which is 300, and uh, one pure, which is 600. Giving us a total of 1,050 oil. They come down here, this is a uh, 600 line. And this line here with the pure and the impure is a 450 line. Moving into our left side here, with the 600 line goes into the left side. Um, I'll quickly run through uh, the oil tripling method. So what you do is with oil tripling is, first thing you do is you take 300 oil. Essentially, um, oil tripling, they call it that because you turn 300 oil into 600 rubber. You take your oil you turn it all into heavy oil residue now you do need an old recipe for this so you turn it all into heavy uh, heavy oil residue and polymer resin i'm not going to go through exact numbers of machines but we'll just show you the recipes and what we're doing Rightio, so there's our 300 oil turning into the purple stuff and the blue stuff you send the purple stuff the heavy oil residue into blenders now this this recipe this um it's so much easier in the blenders. They've cut out so many steps. Mix the heavy oil residue with water, so we're making as much fuel as we can. All right, so oil into heavy oil into fuel, mixing with water. That's these blenders here. We then take that fuel and we mix it with the polymer resin over here. Again, all these machines are at least double sharded. And we use the residual rubber recipe so we mix uh, sorry the first thing we do is we um, make residual rubber with all the polymer resin and then we send that residual rubber with the fuel and we turn it into plastic all right so it's um, six fuel six rubber equals 12 plastic so adding the fuel we double the rubber or we, we double its number we then move across and we do the reverse of that again. So we've got shitloads of fuel. We turn it back into rubber. So we're doubling it again. So we doubled it once, doubled it twice. Then we've got a whole bunch of rubber and we're turning not all of it, but most of it, because we're about to run out of fuel, back into plastic. All right, so most of it's going here to turn into plastic and the leftover is just going straight into rubber. And then we have a whole bunch of plastic, so we've doubled it four times now, have we? Yeah, uh, double there. What do we do? Yep. Uh, double it there, double it there, double it there. Coming back for the last doubling, so we're turning from plastic into rubber one last time. And you can see the amount of um, refineries is getting bigger with each step. So we've got two there, we've got four there. Um, I would have used power shards in these to make it work. And the last doubling, we're turning um, back into rubber again. And um, I have a bunch of load balancing stuff happening here. 
And that's basically it, guys. That's a reasonable run through on how you, um, the oil tripling. Now underneath this floor here, so 300 oil came up to this floor, underneath here is exactly the same. So I'm doing the same thing twice. So essentially I've turned 300 oil into roughly 900 rubber here, and I've turned 300 oil into 900 rubber here. And that's that pure node, that pure node there of 300 oil. All right, let's move along. Over here is where I'm making the circuit boards and I'm using 450 rubber to do that. What I'm doing is basically again here, um, heavy oil residue and fuel again, same as last time and we're flipping it around. The only difference is um, I've tweaked the numbers here because I want to make a whole bunch of petroleum coke in these machines here. Now the reason I'm making the petroleum coke um, is to use one of my favorite recipes to make the circuit boards over here. And it is the electrode circuit board. I really like this recipe um, because petroleum coke, you, you can get buttloads of uh, petroleum coke from, from heavy oil residue and I've got heaps of rubber. The other good thing is um, you can just make circuit boards with nothing but oil. Nothing but oil to make circuit boards, excellent. So that's what I've done here. I've got lots of um, assemblers. I think this, because this is the first factory I built, I haven't actually power sharded these ones um, until I decided to um, really reduce the space and my footprint. But that's it there. Lots of assemblers making circuit boards. All right, guys, that's the rubber. Um, thousand rubber. 180 circuit boards. Let's move on to the next factory. All right, so down there in the blue crater is the rubber that we just looked at and up here in this area um, near this nitrogen node here is the nitric acid. Now before I move on, I'm just going to take a quick look at the um, spreadsheet and explain something. Um, actually, here's my map. Rightio, so um, on the left here, we have all the things required to make the actual uranium fuel rods, which I've completed. On the right hand side here is the processing into plutonium. So I've still got a lot to go, um, but I wanted to focus on the uh, fuel rods and get that done first. But for some reason at the start, I wasn't thinking like that and I actually made the nitric acid. So we'll just uh, quickly pop through that um, factory right now. All right, so nitric acid used for plutonium refinement. We use the 600 iron, 1200 water and the 4,800 nitrogen. There's actually quite a lot of nitrogen. Um, again, I said in a previous video, don't actually have the image for nitrogen on the signs. Um, but hopefully they'll fix that soon. Alright, so 4,800 nitrogen. We're bringing most of it, well more than half of it, from this spot here. This is the, the only pure, like, um, what do you call it, resource well in the map. Like, all of these nodes are pure. So I'm bringing in heaps of nitrogen there, and I actually have to bring in... A, uh, more nitrogen on a train um, and I chose this location because there's a nice water node here and a bit more water here and iron All right, so we bring the goods in uh, Let's just quickly pop over here and look at these constructors first because this is actually quite a simple setup this constructor setup and I'm just smashing iron Into smelters making iron ingots and then I'm making the iron plates Cool because nitric, nitric acid needs a lot of iron plates and then I've set up, uh, I can't remember how many there are, um, like 40 or something, but I've double sharded them. See, everyone's running at 200%. Nitric acid, iron plates, water, and heaps of nitrogen. They take so much nitrogen. All right, now the load balancing on this was kind of tricky. So you see pipes going everywhere. I used to color the pipes, but because this build's gonna be so big, I've decided not to bother with coloring uh, things. I'm just going to roll with it. All right, so we come in here. Um, I've actually used underneath the factory for a bit of um, nitrogen and water as well. Um, and that's about it, guys. That's that's pretty much all I have to show on this factory. Righto, so we're over in the desert now. Um, and this is where I decided to make the steel, just because of where the resource nodes were. Um, 1800 iron, 1800 coal, and we're making 1700 pipes and just 30 of these beams, because that's what we need for beacons. 
All right, so the resources get brought in here. Um, nice clean belts and whatnot. We're turning all that iron into iron ingots because uh, you guys probably know it already, but one of the best recipes in the game is this steel one. Now I do like using um, the other one, the petroleum one. Um, I'll probably use that later, but this is fantastic because all you have to do is turn your iron, uh, turn your iron into ingots, and you get about 50% more yield out of your steel. All right, so iron and coal into the foundries, making all the steel. Coming down here, all the steel ingots. I only need one constructor here for the um, the beams. Cranked up to double when I get 30 beams. And then the rest of these constructors here are making pipes. Now with pipes, um, let's have a look here. Pipe, with pipe, there's literally only one recipe. So when you do pipes, that's what you do. You use constructors. And that's it. These are all double sharded. Um, and I'm not using um, everything just yet for the pipes. Pipes are used in nuclear and nuclear refinement. All right, so the quick wire and the copper factory. Um, again, everything is double. So if you want to imagine this footprint doubled, if you didn't use any power shards, um, yeah, it's huge. Um, with the power shards, or with this build, I know it's modded, but I'm not adding anything new to the game. So anything you'll see is possible to do in vanilla. And when it comes to the justification of using power shards, the way I justify it in my head is if you had a doggo farm, like an epic doggo farm, technically the map has an unlimited supply of power shards from um, doggos bringing you slugs. But anyway, I digress. Cool, so uh, we have heaps of copper and caterium coming in and I just built it over the water because I didn't calculate the water. Um, I just thought, hey, I'll just add water as I need it. Um, and as you, oh, I actually did write it down. There's another factory where I didn't calculate it. But if I just build it on the water, then there's essentially an unlimited supply of water underneath. Radio. Coming in here, we're using the copper recipe. So any any pure recipe for ingots, being st uh, iron, copper, or caterium, they're good to go. They're, there's there's they're nothing but efficiency. Um, you add water and you increase your yield. So that's why I've chosen to use that one. And we have shitload of refineries making copper ingots. And same again here with the caterium. The pure recipe, um, increase the yield, and obviously you don't get as much yield out of um, Caterium because of the way it's set up and it's rare, but it is what it is. And that's that. Pure copper, pure Caterium. Add water, increase the yield. Right, we move over to over here, and we have the uh, copper sheets. All right, I didn't use the steamed copper sheets here. Why didn't I use the copper sheets? Um, simply because copper's not that rare of a resource and I'm only making 300 here. Um, as you'll see, this is one of the rare occasions where I didn't even put shards in the um, constructors. I just need 300 and I wanted simplicity, so I just banged it in. Um, I could I could have used the, the other recipe, but whatever. Um, such a small amount that I just went and did that. Um, over here we have wire. Um, there's a few different, different recipes for wire, but I've just chosen the standard um, wire recipe. All right, 1500 wire. There we go there, two 750 lines. Now, with the caterium, uh, with the quick wire. Quick wire is rare, so I'm using the copper. Uh, Shitloads of copper. And we ended up with two 540 lines of caterium. This is the recipe we're using. Now this recipe is good. It's 15 copper, 75, sorry, 75 copper, 15 caterium makes 180 or one five equals 12. Essentially it uses a lot of copper to increase your quick wire yield. It's a lot more complex, but if you are trying to squeeze more out of the map, um, I would recommend this recipe in uh, combination with the pure ingot to really crank up how much um, quick wire you can get out of the map. 
Right, and I've neatened this this up a bit. Right, there we go. 18 lines of 720. Lots of quick work. Right, this, uh, while I'm here, I'll just show the bus. This is an epic um, bus, but um, quite a lot of these factories use quick wire, so it basically goes up here, um, some of it goes down here, and then the rest splits off. The two main factories that use it are the, um, yeah, we'll go through them in a minute. Let's go to the next one, which is just here. Easy peasy, uh, 60 um, AI limiters per minute. We're actually using the quick wire and the copper sheets. All right, um, it turns out that these ones, I decided I didn't need to use power shards just because of the amount, um, and it's quite simple. So smash the quick wire in and the copper sheets. A lot of these factories um, produce excess or they don't use perfectly a belt. So I've just got little signs here to, um, to show how much is left over. So I haven't used all the quick wire and this will get sent to another factory. Um, while I'm here, I'll just take a quick look at this. This is one that's used for plutonium refinement, which I'm going to use later, um, but I just built it. Um, yeah, anyway. All right, the stators. Uh, what did I do for stators? We used the regular stator recipe because it is steel pipes and wire, and um, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, that's it. Stators, 1280 wire, 480 pipes, 160 stators, and we've got a bunch of assemblers here, and these are all double sharded. So, there we go. Uh, while we're here, we may as well just move straight on over to this factory here, and this is making the beacons. 110 beacons um, on the alt recipe. Only needed five manufacturers because these boys pump out heaps, so this is running at 200% and it makes 20 per minute. Um, it does use crystal oscillators, so it's more complex, but at the end of the day, it's, um, it's a great recipe uh, for beacons, especially if you need beacons for nuclear, which you do. Righto, the electronic control rods, or sorry, the electromagnetic control rods. Um, I've double charted these boys. We're using the alternate electromagnetic connection rods. It uses high speed connectors and stators, which is kind of more complex, but at the end of the day, it uses less quick wire. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> All right, so uh, we can see we're using those circuit boards from before, bunch of quick wire and silica to make these high speed connectors. Reasonably complex recipe. Um, high speed connectors are pretty thirsty on the old quick wire. But here we go and we're actually using the alternate, which is the silicon high-speed connector. Uh, and there we go, that's what we use. Um, everything here is running at 200%. Um, so I have the quick wire coming in this side, all load balance, um, that can probably go away, that was temporary. Actually, that's 360 left over, quick wire going to another factory. <laughs> the silica comes in from the silica factory or the quartz factory. And a little bit of load balancing here for the silica and then we're smashing it all in there. And obviously the circuit boards, they're getting smashed in too. All right, the quartz and silica, righty-o. So, first of all, up on this platform, we're doing the dreaded, <laughs> the dreaded Cheap silica. Now, it is good. It does use a shitload of limestone. Um, it's a lot more work. I wouldn't use this. I wouldn't use this recipe unless you're trying to really squeeze out of the map um, the most amount of resources you could, because the yield is not that great. Like it's good, but it's not like amazing like some of the other recipes. Like like a must use recipe. I've chosen to use it because um, I like to punish myself. Um, to, I've just squeezed out a bit more of the, um, the quartz out of the map, all right? Uses more power, it's more effort, it uses more limestone, and you get a little bit more silica. And that's what I've done. Okay, so all these, th this was a big factory. Um, I think there's like 200, there's actually 100 assemblers here, 
and they're all running at 200%. So if I was to set this factory up without shards, you're looking at 200% bullets. Um, all right, so as you can see here, all the limestone and quartz comes up, um, smashed in that side and all the, um, yeah, anyway. Ah, oh, I forgot to get rid of this. This was my old style. Um, and I've made it nice and big now, the new style of signs. All right. Um, a lot of this resource comes in by train um, and I've chosen to build the quartz factory over here because there's actually six normal nodes of quartz in close proximity. One, two, three, normal. And then uh, right here, one, two, three, normal. Uh, over there is a water um, thingy, a water resource well. So I've grabbed about 800 or so water, brought it across for the actual quartz crystal. Now the quartz crystal is in refineries using the pure quartz crystal recipe. Similar to the ingots, you add water uh, and you get more yield, all right? And any of these recipes where you add water to get more yield, I'd recommend using because water in the map is, is pretty much unlimited. And here we go, this is what this factory does. We're pumping out uh, 10 lines of 525. Um, I organize my belts like this uh, in, in nice groups because it's easier to work with, numbers, numbers wise. Um, and yeah, uh, what's going on here? Oh, that's fine. It will be gaps in it because it is only a 525 line, not a 780 line. And then here, the, the quartz, um, two 577 lines. One of the factories, the crystal oscillators uses just under 577, and one of the factories for something else, for plutonium, uses just over 577. So I've just got a, um, a smart splitter here, um, and the overflow from the quartz factory will go to the other factory, which I haven't built yet. All right, so that's quartz done. All right, moving into the last factory, or oh, the second last factory. Uh, this is the other thirsty boy on the quick wire, and that is the encased uranium cells. Now this uses 2100 uranium, which is all the uranium in the map, which is three normal nodes and one uh, impure node. Um, also silica and quickwire and sulfur. All right, so I brought all the uranium in the map into this one location, three normal nodes. So one, two, and three normal nodes and this guy here is the um, impure node and I'm splitting the impure which is 300 into the three 600s and then we end up with three 700 lines. All right for those that are really really um, OCD and finicky you may notice and I've just noticed as well I've, I'm having a little drama here with this um, silica line but that's not a problem I'm just gonna troubleshoot that in a minute I'll have to sort that out it's fine. All right, so I have chosen to use the alternate recipe, and the reason I chose to use the alternate recipe is because I want to make the max build, and to be able to get the max um, uranium cells, you need to use this alternate recipe, and that's why I've used it. Um, all right, so lots of quick wire. Uh, so I had to kind of spread out here to, to be able to load balance it all into these machines. Again, there's 40 machines here, or 42 machines, um, and they're all running at at least 200%. So there would have been like 84 machines if I wasn't to use shards. And that's it. That's how I do it. Um, this whole build is, um, I don't want to get fancy with the, what do you call, like design and things, but I do want to be neat. So essentially what I've been doing is, when I plan the factories out, I uh, essentially use this tile here, so like the steel tile, and um, I bang out the floor space and I add or remove floor space as needed. And once the factory is complete, I've literally just been chucking a, um, a concrete border, nice neat concrete border around the factory, and bloody um, just putting legs down to the floor, okay? Simple and effective. Um, this, this build is focusing on production, massive production, and not um, being fancy. But I do want to be neat. We'll sort that silica out in a minute. All right, let's move on to the final factory for this video. 
the uranium fuel cells. Now they use the encased uranium cells, the electromagnetic control rods, the crystal oscillators and the beacons to make 50.4. Now 50.4 in the current update, update five, is uh, the most you can make in the map with the most efficient recipes uh, to run the most power plants. You can run 252 power plants. I'm only running 250 because uh, I like that number and I like to just give my machines, uh, my power plants, a little bit more than they need so they never stutter. Alright, here's the recipe. Yep, everything's 200%. So there's 40 odd machines here. And yep, that's it. A lot of work, a lot of work. So that was kind of detailed explanation of the factories. Um, for those that are into that sort of stuff, uh, you may have appreciated it. Others probably found it boring, but that's, it is what it is. Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, or anything like that, I'll do my best to answer them uh, in the comments. And uh, if anyone wants to know how I do these manifolds or how I set these factories up and whatnot, um, let me know. Any questions at all, I'll do my best. All right, before I sign off, just a little uh, motivational uh, little look. Um, I've brought the train, I've hooked it up on the train and brought the nuclear rods down and I'm starting to stockpile them here. Um, there's actually this, but there's actually two, two train stations at each end that are building up. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot more work to go. A lot more work to go. The, um, Hooking all this up is going to take bloody hours, um, and with the troubleshooting, you don't do you don't do a massive massive system like this um, without with expecting to get it right first time. Um, you'll never get it right first time. So troubleshooting is part of the process. Um, I now I now I don't get frustrated by it. I, I enjoy the process of troubleshooting. So that silica you saw earlier, I'm gonna to have to fix that problem, but it's all part of the game. Anyway, guys, hopefully the video didn't go too long. Uh, I'll leave it there and catch us later.